Welcome to the 850 Arbor Bites Podcast. On this episode, we are going to talk about things like fish. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely did not shoot this in reverse order. Nope, we didn't. No, brought to you by the magic of editing. And our fantastic production team. Yes. On this episode, you're going to hear us talk about things we'd like to see in Star Wars. Uh, general dumbassery going on here. A lot of dumbassery. A lot of dumbassery. You're going to get so much dumbassery. And uh, yeah, that's a good one, too, dumbassery. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about helmets. And we're going to uh, enjoy the show. An episode of something in the early 90s, and then he disappeared until like 2005 when he came out and did some little indie movie called Getting the Munchies. Well, that took a turn. It, had to well, hit it, it hit didn't it. work like a normal blaster rifle that shoots a little laser bolt. It was this like noodly, limp, like glowy plasma thing that sort of squirted out of the end and wiggled around a little bit. <laughs> It was so bad. Well, but we're going to have to have an 18 and up rating on this video now with that kind of a description. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, he knocked those force powers right out of him. Well, <laughs> just <laughs> slap the force right out of him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> you, know, you, you, <laughs> you leave that door crack just one bit and you I come crashing through. through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's just talk about what we want to see in, in in our like dream Star Wars movies. You know, I mentioned that a while, a few weeks back. And what do we want to see in Star Wars? What would what what? what I know what I want to see. You want to see a show centered completely around Babu Frick? <laughs> <laughs> Frick you guys! I'm out of here. <laughs> no squeezy, no squeezy. <laughs> Bad baby. <laughs> Probably the only good thing that came out of Rise of Fish Walker. Yeah. Only good thing. The, uh, I don't even know what that species is called. I don't either. But they're, they're, I think they were in The Last Starfighter. <laughs> I think that's what he was. A little dude in the aquarium that had the three fingers. See, we're saving, we're missing all the good stuff right now. He's, he's been, uh, you're been rolling? Been okay, yeah. yeah, they're the little dudes and the, and the, like, oh, my friends. Oh. <laughs> And that's what he is. So they're gonna have to like splice all this crap back together. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when you put cameras so, in front of idiots. <laughs> so, uh, at the the event on Sunday, I won that autographed photo out of the raffle drawing thing. It's Tron, right? No, no, no. It was uh, oh. one of the characters from the uh, the Ewoks. Caravan oh, it was Mace. Courage. Mace, yeah, Mace Tawani. Tawani. Yeah. Had no idea who he we're was. Gonna, we're going to pull him up on IMDb. I, I had to oh, that did? day, yeah. And as soon as, when, when uh, I think it was uh, Mark was like, yeah, that was from, uh, you know, Caravan Ewoks of Courage. Caravan of Courage. Yeah. What a terrible, and I looked it up. I was like, I remember that little girl's curly hair. I right. remember watching yeah. that movie as a kid. So I made Jess watch it with me the other night. Oh, you actually watched it? Oh, the whole thing. Oh. It was so bad. <laughs> oh. It was man. so bad. They really are. It was uh, like, oh. I, I get it. You know, the force is like this mystical energy. But how do they explain like straight up like fantasy magical BS? You know, like at one point the kid falls in the lake because the lake is like this magic cursed lake. And he's now under the water and he's like beating on the the glass to try and get out and he's stuck and he's going to drown. It's like, how, where's the sci-fi here? This is, this it's is fantasy. Just, it's straight up high fantasy. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it is fantasy. So let me guess. Mace Tawani had to have had a credit in at least one episode of law and order, right? I have no, I didn't oh, look didn't him look up at, that you didn't look up his filmography. No. Okay. I, I, it wouldn't I, shock me. That he would be in Law and Order because I, I, I will see like random and I people were joking in Law about and it. Order. We were like, if we look this dude up, he'll have like one TV show credit before the movie where they saw him. Mm -hmm. He has the movie and he has like one TV show credit afterwards, and that's that was it. That was his entire career. Ooh, we're interested now. What happened? I got to look him up. Wani. We don't we don't remember his real name either, do we? Uh, Ooh. Drew Andrew something. Ooh. 
He's got to be like 60 by now. Eric Walker. Man, I was way off. Let's see. His IMDb. You know, when I was watching the film, it was kind of like, I, he really kind of looks like a young, like a teenage Mark Hamill. So I kind yeah. of can see as, why they went as, with as, that. As a child watching it, that's always the way I kind of felt. Yeah. But as an adult, man, I don't want to go home and watch that thing tonight. Oh, it's so bad. I got bad. better things to do with my life. I, 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 I had to watch Jess a holiday we special a few watch years the, ago. The part two uh. version, because the, there's, there's <laughs> there are two. A second there, one there's to a that. caravan of courage, and then like the battle for battle for Endor. Endor. Yeah. And I don't remember which one was which that well. I remember parts of them. Um, was the witch in there? The 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 she she was like black uh, black dress and had like crow feathers and stuff all no. over had a little magic yeah. ring that's, that's okay then that's going to be the battle for indoor, for indoor. Yeah. so caravan of courage that was the one with the, okay and the did not have gorax Wil- or gornax or wilford like brimley that. did not make nope. it no okay wilford brimley. no wilford brimley okay so yeah you're gonna have to go watch battle for indoor because yeah. it's <laughs> it's worse <laughs> 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 it it is. I, it's, uh, some of the effects weren't bad, but it, it the makeup was actually really good. Uh, the the alien guys are in the tower and and stuff, and I think they'll explain some of your fantasy. Yeah, yeah, because there's a witch I, I, lady. I, did, I thought the effects she turns to on a crow. It were, were pretty good. You know, I don't know if they had the same people as they had in the the actual Star Wars films working on it. Sure, but, but where does it appear in the timeline? Is it before Return of the Jedi? I or don't after. Know. I mean, I, it's it's got to be after because Return of the Jedi came out in like eighty two, and this came out in like eighty three. Well, or, sure, or but the timeline. I mean, is it a prequel to Return of the Jedi? I, I had think the, it's had the Ewoks seen humans other than Wilford Brimley yet. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll have to look that up. So okay. So what other credits do does Eric Walker have? So let's see. I, I'm putting five bucks on Law and Order right now. Uh, you're, you're, you would owe me five bucks. He's never been in No, movie. all right. Well. Uh, The Circle Family, a movie from 82, having it all. Uh, he was in an episode of Webster, The Ewok Adventure, there Ewok's Battle for Endor. I assume The Ewok Adventure is Caravan of Courage. Yeah, but you're pretty much right. He had little TV bits and television bits and then... One episode of Leave it to Beaver, one episode of The Magical World of Disney, uh, Less Than Zero, whatever that is. Some stuff into the the late 80s, uh, an episode of something in the early 90s, and then he disappeared until like 2005 when he came out and did some little indie movie called Getting Da Munchies. Well, that took a turn. And then another one called Shadows in the Woods, which has got 6.1 out of 10 stars, so maybe it's pretty decent. Who knows? I've watched some one-star stuff that wasn't that bad before. Yeah. (laughs) All righty. So uh, that is the illustrious career of e- Eric Walker. Yep. Mace Tawani. And they had like those little family life alert bracelets on them too that had like the yeah. people lit up and they die and they're like, yeah, because oh, they found the whole thing was they found their dad's life sign bracelet or whatever on the like, I don't know if it was supposed to be the giant Gorax's faithful hound or whatever, but it was that like eight foot tall dog that looked like something out of a, a Warhammer fantasy sculpt the way that the head was like it was it was hilarious as we were watching it I was like first off like the uh, the, uh, uh, the the stop motion on this one was really kind of bad compared to what I remember of you know the, but the we stop had motion stop motion in TV okay yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure it was a little better than, you know, old Ray Harryhausen stuff, but not well, going to be as good as... if you think about the stop motion of, like, the uh, the, the Rancor. Right. And stuff like well, that. that was it, really it was good. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. The stop motion of this giant dog creature was so bad. And that was my first thought, was the stop motion is really terrible. And then the secondly, it was like, that thing's head looks like it came out of, you know, a, a, an early 1980s... Games Workshop, you know, wolf sculpt from their Warhammer Fantasy Battles or something like that. It was just, I mean, straight out of the... And as the, long like, as the, the space orcs can with, like, will it to work, upturned it'll nose. be good. I don't know. It, it was hilarious, though. Well, I guess... 
this will be a good intro to today's actual topic, which will be, <laughs> what do you want to see as a Star Wars film or in a Star Wars film? Obviously, it's not going to be anything based around Sindel and the Ewok Adventure. That's not our dream movie, right? <laughs> I mean, it could be. It could be. You think so? I mean... Wait till you see Wilford Brimley. He's so ornery. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good casting for it. He's probably the best actor that'll be in I, the any little of girl those that shows. played Sindel did a great job. Well, you she's know? not bad. Who knows? I, I mean, at look the time up her she career was what, like five or something. So who knows? Yeah, I mean, there's some good little kid actors. So here we go. What do I want to see in a Star Wars movie? And I'll preface it that they did kind of like touch off on this um, with Andor a bit. But what I really want to see is a movie centered around the Empire and shot and filmed from the perspective of the Empire. So we'll have the Empire as the heroes. We'll have the Rebellion as the bad guys. And they can go ahead and toss in Saw Gerrera and Cassian in there and just show how evil the Rebellion really was. Yeah. But we'll also do like a side thing of like, Build up the characters, like you got the Stormtrooper barracks, and see the camaraderie between Stormtroopers and the barracks, them just going yeah. throughout their day, maybe like a couple of officers uh, kissing their wives and kids goodbyes. Honey, I'm going to work on the Death Star today, you know, something like that. Yeah. And would you would you really want it framed as the Empire are the good guys, or would you want it more of like a Shades of Grey? Like everybody knows the Empire are the bad guys. But I like the idea of, you know, focusing on on the people I instead of the entity. No, you're absolutely wrong. The Empire were not the bad guys. They were the <laughs> legitimate form of government that had taken over the galaxy after the Clone Wars. So, Well, but a government derives its power from the people. And if the people no longer support the government, the government becomes illegitimate. Well, that's why they were an empire. So, and they weren't a democracy. The emperor took care of the Senate. Yeah, they became an autocracy. Yes, they, yeah. they, they, the emperor was above all. But, Everything but at, was that done. Point, at that point, it ceases being a legitimate government. But it's still it, a form becomes, of government. You just didn't like the government, so too bad. Well, it, it, it becomes a, a, uh, you know, a forceful autocracy where the people are ruled by force and fear instead of by yeah, consent. Yeah, that's why they built a giant planet-killing laser. Yeah, two so, of them. Yeah, two of them. <laughs> yeah, technically three, but yeah, two of them. There was, there, was, there was a prototype that started. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they could, like, test something. That may not be canon anymore. But, like, that's what I want to see. I want to see the Rebellion framed for what they are, the insufferable terrorists, and, like, see the campaigns, and, and you know, they'll, they'll have to, like, show the Rebellion killing innocent Imperials and families and things like that. Yeah. Because, I mean, well, there, there were radical rebels. Like, yeah. I guess Saul and, Carrera and, was a radical Rebel. I, they even alluded to that, if I'm not mistaken, oh, in Rogue One. They they talked about how Jen Erso had had left Saw's company on bad terms because she really did not agree with how he was going about enacting the rebellion, and he like said straight out, like I did what had to be done, you know. It's not my fault that, you know, so many people died or whatever. I forget exactly what was said, but it, it was very clear, like, Saw is a bad dude mm -hmm. who did some really terrible stuff. Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah he, he is. He was. He always will be. And thankfully, the Death Star was tested on him. <laughs> bad Saw. That's right. Bad. Bad rebels. <laughs> legitimate form of government i'm just I, saying that that would actually make a really kind of a neat series because it would it could be done in a tv show instead of a movie I, I'd, yeah i'd be fine with that I, movies without trying to get too off topic I, the whole movie industry has really changed yeah like since you know 2020 and all that stuff i really won't go to the theater anymore unless it's like an epic event and i know it's going to be good i'm no, not I'll just wait for it to come out on e netflix exactly <laughs> because like two months later it, it's going to be on netflix hulu amazon yeah, one of the streaming yeah, services it, if you're streaming to showtime or or hbo or anything it's going to it's going to come to one yeah, within so like three months amc and regal cinema and all you other companies out there blame the the 
television companies, they're the ones at fault for why nobody's coming to the theaters Pretty anymore. Much. Everybody's already paying 100 bucks a month in their subscription fees to nine different streaming services. Or put out an actual good movie that's worth seeing. <laughs> There's H- plenty how about of that? good movies out, yeah, and, but... Uh, I, uh, why go see it in the theater when in two or three months I'm going to see it on one of the multiple streaming services that I already pay for? You know the last thing I saw in the theater? Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we wanted to, hey, it's re-releasing. Okay, let's go see it. Yeah, I, I, I'll go see that. Yeah. But we're still. I think the last thing I saw in the theater was The Rise of Skywalker. Ooh. <laughs> You need to fix that. <laughs> like, as soon as they did the re-release of Empire, I, I checked my AMC. It was like, ooh, the last thing we watched was Rise of Skywalker. We need to get to theater. <laughs> now. <laughs> that, that really, I, I like the idea of the series because when you have, you know, even a six-episode series, you've got at least triple the, the runtime of your stip- you know, stereotypical sure. film. You can cram in so much more story, and I like that. I yeah. like being able... You know, when it, when Jess and I are, are at home in the evenings, you know, we, we have dinner, we sit down for a couple hours of TV. It's nice to be able to have a week's worth of what is, you know, for us, a week's worth of watching in the evenings because that gives us, you know, we can stay on the same thing. We can follow the storyline, even with all the twists and turns that you would have in a, a you know, a multi-episode TV show. And the more seasons, the better, really, for us. But not all shows get lots of seasons, but I, I like that instead of like sitting down watching one movie. Okay. It's over. That's it. And then a week later I'm like, yeah, we watched that movie, but I don't remember anything about it. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a big movie guy. I'll go home and browse around movies sometimes before series, but I have, it depends on my mood too. Yeah. Sometimes I'll get a mood. I, I want to watch 20 minute long sitcoms on a long series. I'm fine with that because yeah. I can get in an episode or two and I, that's it. Yeah, exactly. I'm done. You know, exactly. I don't necessarily want to watch 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes of a mini movie of people standing around going, hmm, well, hmm, that sucks. Well, that's just you know, bad writing if yeah. people are standing around that much. And it depends on the series. I, you know, to throw some credit to Andor, they had a lot of people standing around, but there was always stuff going on. It wasn't necessarily like action-packed, you know, explosions and, and Michael Bay and shit like that, but it was like... Base explosions. <laughs> there weren't base explosions everywhere, but it was there was something simmering, you know, that slow burn. Uh, you know, sure there were people standing around staring at each other, but they were punctuating the the uh, thriller aspect of what was happening. Yeah, that, it know. was definitely like a, a a right series, wrong time. You know, when you really think about that. Um, Mostly just because I think this was the show we needed probably not long after, like, season two of Mandalorian. You know, we, we needed to build up the Imperial aspect of it a little bit more. I, I can tell you, with Andor, I, it took us forever to get to watch it and took us forever to get through it. But when it was done, it was like, you know, that was a really good series. Yeah. I, I, they could have re-edited that into a movie, and it probably would have been a good movie. Yeah. So, but but for the wrong time, like, oh, when did it release? Did it release? It was before season three of Mandalorian, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was definitely before that. Yeah, it was kind of an, in this weird outlier place it, it, across the whole canon because we had just done Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian season two, um, so it was just and, and Obi Wan Kenobi. So it, it was like a, a different, hmm, how do you say it? Just personality of everything that we had seen before. Yeah. It very much was a, yeah. a different feel because of the setting and, and the, the, the plot line and the writing. Instead of it being, you know, the, the prototypical hero's journey type thing it was hey, we, we, saw, we saw the dude sitting at the breakfast table with mm-hmm. his mom eating a bowl of kicks yeah you know and it's like that's what y'all eat for breakfast oh they actually put blue milk on it uh, okay yeah. that's interesting there were some nice little touches in there him yeah, and eating that's, a bowl of cereal yeah. in his mom's living room and that's you know? exactly what i mean by <laughs> stuff i want to see i'm fine with seeing the kind of day-to-day yeah you know but let's just frame it from that imperial perspective yeah that's been my thing for a long time is Let's get away from, you know, 
Skywalker. Yeah. Let's, I, it, it's as soon as you throw a Jedi into it, it's like, ah, well, that's it. They're going to save okay the day. I'm okay with different Jedi. I'm just, I'm so like, okay, we've had nine movies of the same characters. And I get it, people get attached to characters, but it's like, we have an entire galaxy's worth of exploration to do. And we know that other characters can be just as popular. You know, look at Boba Fett. Even before the book of Boba Fett, the, the show came out, how much screen time did Boba Fett have in the original movies? Hang on, I can count it up. Um, a minute and 27 seconds. And yet, despite a minute 27 seconds of screen time, he was arguably a core character. Yes. It, you could not talk about Star Wars without people bringing up, mentioning, referencing, or wanting to talk about Boba Fett. Well, he was a mystery man. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and we wanted to know, who is this guy? Absolutely. And there's so many other people out there that we could have some really great storylines about. But they kept going back to... And especially with the sequel trilogy, episode seven, eight, nine, they kept going back to Skywalker and the Skywalker legacy, and then bringing Palpatine back from the dead. And it's like, let's have something, let let's have some new blood, some new people. Yeah, they should have fleshed out Finn a little bit more. Oh, what a because lost! It, it, they, they set him up there. so well oh at the end God. of Force Awakens, and then it was he was relegated to comedy trash. Yeah. by Last Jedi, it's literally like, trash because they. You know, laughed about him being on the the janitorial detail or whatever so? it was. It's a job, but it was still it was the joke. They were literally the joke was you're a garbage stormtrooper, which became you're a garbage character. They right. did him so yeah. wrong. Yeah, they, so they really wrong. did because he had some kind of force sensitivity, and it had been neat seeing the converted stormtrooper. Yeah, you know, get get a little mm. bit of training or education even yeah not even training just give me some education about you know wh wh what is this feeling i have yeah feelings <laughs> 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 talk about feelings in the star wars universe so what would you like to see i mean i kind of just laid it out i i don't mind so the we kind of agree lines. but well i don't mind the existing storylines as long as they don't if they got over the idea of just hand waving away ooh the force is magic and to explain any glaring inconsistency that's not how the force works exactly um if they if they could get over that i am okay with the 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 kind of current way things are are written and such as that as my big thing is like I just want to see some new blood. I want to see somebody that's not somehow directly tied to Skywalker, Palpatine, um, Kenobi. So the Boss Nass prequel series is completely out for you? Um, Boss Nass and his rise to power and in Gungan City? I, <laughs> Darth Jar Jar would be a hilarious one to see. That that would be good if they started doing some like uh, infinites or um, yeah infinites. I mean that's what Marvel calls it infinites. Uh, you know tales of Star Wars. Hey, yeah. this isn't canon, but yeah, you know, and they could do little animated series like that. I mean, actually, that's actually honestly not, that's, though, why couldn't like they that. have all that stuff be canon? Like, as long as they have a, a, a core team that checks writing for things like that, those major we already know they don't have that team. They could and they should. They should, yes. They don't, and that's a, a flaw and a, a you know a shortfall and, and a failure of foresight on and their part. The, the props department can't even put clone trooper biceps on the right direction. Yeah. Okay, look at a photo. Turn it around. Yeah. Not that hard. <laughs> oh, that's a tangent I don't really want to go off on. Because I haven't fully analyzed all that yet. It, it's enough to know... <sighs> and in the whole costume world, I, you know what? I don't even want to know right now. If we end up having a costume guideline come out that has the biceps around. Uh-oh. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to feel. Production fail. <laughs> yeah, 
I, I don't know how I'm going to feel if we have to turn biceps around just because they were in 20 seconds of of uh, flashback scenes. Hey, it, you know, technically speaking, the stormtrooper with his bicep and his shoulder bell fell down around his elbow is canon because it was on screen. That's fine. You know, so is gaffer's tape. So are zippers. Yeah. So if if they have biceps backwards, hey, who cares? I do. <laughs> I do I, because I we because have we have been looking at them for twenty years. I'm, twenty years. I'm the, the little guy, Archie thing goes in the back. I'm the guy who would, as I was putting them on, accidentally mix them up and get them backwards. So for me, it's like it, I don't have a clone costume, but if I did, it would be like, hey, at least I've got some saving grace there. <laughs> there were these things back in the day before you know everything was digital called. Uh, daily polaroids where they take a picture yeah like of a costume take a fuller, and be a, like a polaroid photo all right, of the costume this is what you look like in this scene so tomorrow when we're shooting it let's consult that polaroid yeah and kids at home do you know what a polaroid is okay they don't just make 3d printers back in the day you know they they made these little cameras you know what a camera is right <laughs> okay uh where you take the picture and Everybody it would knows what a camera out. is. It's an app on your smartphone. Right. It's the app. <laughs> but it, it would go ahead and spit out a picture, and a chemical process would happen, and you'd shake it and set it on the table for about five minutes, and you'd instantly have a photograph. Just, That's a Polaroid. Just Google it, kids. Just yeah. Google it. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, they stopped making Polaroid film, I think, about six years ago, give or take, because nobody used them anymore. Yep. But then again, I'm also the idiot that never thought that – cell phone cameras would get good enough to actually replace digital cameras so now they really have oh yeah yeah except for like now, dslr type yeah for cameras, like commercial but, application photography but i mean gotta have, I, I was but just they make the, some great lens attachments for cameras oh and things exactly like, they do really well. and I, I never thought that but that was also way back in the day of flip phone cameras yeah, too yeah. so sorry yeah well I'd... to to circle us back i don't really necessarily have any particular like i want to see this one storyline or anything like as an example the the ewoks caravan of courage i'm okay with that as a storyline in and of itself because it introduced us to some new characters sure we had wicket was still in there okay but it well, he's a tentpole character you, yeah you can't have an ewok without wicket but I, i'm okay with like you know one or two of those, you know, that, that, that sort of character in the films. Um, preferentially, they would only be in there long enough to intro the story, and then the story would become its own branch away from that main character. But, yeah, I, I don't really have, a, you know, a specific storyline. I just like to see the different explorations. And I thought that that was kind of a neat exploration of the moon of Endor and the different you know, creatures that inhabited it. It was cheesy as heck because it was all like, they were trying to like, okay, let's write a fantasy film with high magic and everything. It was cheesy as crap, but I enjoyed it because it's still Star Wars. There were Star Wars things, although the way his blaster worked was just way wrong. His blaster, I don't know if you remember it. It was like wrapped in cloth or something and he had it, to well it, it didn't it. work like a normal blaster rifle that shoots a little laser bolt it was this like noodly limp like glowy plasma thing that sort of squirted out of the end and wiggled around a little bit <laughs> it was so bad well, but we're gonna have to have a 18 and uprating on this video now with that kind of a description <laughs> it was so bad it was like this little plasma penis squirt out the end of the blaster. So terrible. Oh, can't take but you anywhere. Overall, I could still enjoy it because it was like, it's in the Star Wars universe. There's definitely Star Wars things that we all recognize and we all know, but, you know, it Mostly was a, trees. a very different storyline. It was just so different. It didn't have anything to do with uh, the Force or, I guess you could say that, like, the magic user, Ewok lady, she was supposed to be like their witch princess or whatever. <laughs> uh, well, she was supposed to be magic. She had a little like a staff with a little crystal on the top. Well, like Chief Chirpa. And she like shot this like green flashlight out of the flashlight that paralyzed a spider thing for a little while. 
I mean, you could say that that was just her channeling the force to. It probably was some form of the force. Yeah. That, and and the few Ewoks that were attuned to it were able to have some training of some sort. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, but uh, you know, the Ewoks would have passed it off as, oh, they're they're magic. shaman, they're magicians. Yeah. You know, it's magic. Uh, of course, because they were really pretty much an uncontacted tribe. Yeah. Or species. Largely, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's it's just. Production fail. There we go. <laughs> now we're rolling. My arm got tired. That's all right. That's all right. Fish happens. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But God, it doesn't matter. It's random rambling. That's about what 90% of this is, I think. Yeah. Random ram- rambling. But, I, you know, it's I, I really enjoyed the Book of Boba Fett for the new characters, not all of them. Uh, the Mod Squad. Uh, yeah, I I didn't mind them as a a set of characters. It was it, it, again not it was very costume and props. It, it was the the Vespa scooters that they yeah. had. No, they needed to be swoop bikes. I'm I'm not even apologizing. Those needed to be swoop bikes. Yeah, and and I get that they were trying to make a throwback to George Lucas's early filmmaking, where he you know did the the yeah, but put it in 1950s universe fifties Americana. Yeah, the the costumes and props were really what it kind was, of shot It was them obvious they had swoop bikes because there was a swoop bike gang yeah. that Boba Fett went and kicked the living crap out of. Yeah, a couple times. Um, and then uh, again with with their costumes, characters, all that stuff, not a problem. The costumes. You were on a desert planet. Look, take it from the Tuscans and the Jawas, fully covered, head to toe. Everyone else walking around, like these big outer robes and stuff over them, to do what? Protect you from the scalding twin suns. And the blown sands. Exactly. But no, they were wearing leather jackets. And the girl was pasty white. Imagine, like, come on, you should get a tan as soon as you walk out the door. Imagine getting a layer of sand and desert grit inside that leather. Oh, within, oh, a, within a day or two, no. it just wear your skin bleeding and raw. Completely. No. Ugh. It's just silly stuff, and, and the reasons why we need more continuity in the people behind the scenes. And that's what I was saying. There's nobody back there really keeping up with the continuity. And if they were, they'd probably yeah. just mess it up anyway. So we're available if y'all need us for any continuity. <laughs> Don't want to move to California, so we've already proven you can, like, zoom this stuff in. Yeah, that's the sort of thing you, you can know? easily be done remotely. It would basically yeah. just be, you know, the continuity keeper would have to – just create a giant Excel spreadsheet you Pretty know, much. That, that would have to be referenced. Anytime somebody talked about this thing or this group, they would have to pull up that entry. Okay, read up. Okay, we need to make sure that this jives what they're writing in the upcoming episodes with what we know. Or there's got to be an explanation for why it's changing. Correct. And let's <clears throat> do it. Do we need to put in our resumes? No? <laughs> That'd be nice. I mean, we'll fly out to be on set every once in a while if we're needed. That's no yeah, big deal. I'm down for some yeah. trips to California. We can just do that. Shooting on on location in the sure. UK or whatever. Against a nice big green screen. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going to be on this green screen back here, huh? Better show it to me. As long as they don't do it like they did <laughs> with uh, The Mandalorian, where it basically 90% of the filming is just in a, a green room, you know, with the, the projector on the background. Uh, that new thing is kind of neat that they have where, where they were they, they put like what 20 30 story green screens but they projected the scenes in yeah intermixed. yeah they they calculated yeah. where the camera was looking and what the background would look like and at that like from the camera's view them. and the projector would project yeah. onto the walls behind I mean, that, them. that was a good system I, you, you really don't want anything. You don't want to uh, know the uh, early life of Mon Calamari. You know, Not especially. I can't really say like there's one. There are so many that I oh, would be f- fantastically interested in watching and finding out a, more. A, of. A, a, a hut crime series. You know where they, where they put? Uh, yeah. So I, I'm, what an I'm, awesome I'm, dude! I'm throwing some stuff dude. out here. <laughs> It would be Law and Order in Star Wars. Ooh, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, dong dong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but instead of like you know, the, the, there would be like a you know a gangster hut that is controlling his little minions, and you know the the uh, uh, 
I'm brain fart. Not the wardens. What are they called? The 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 X-wing pilot guy. Yeah. Cara Dune. They yeah. were uh, not rangers. Wardens. Rangers. Thank you. Yeah, you have like a team of rangers that are trying to like keep the peace, but you've got this you know kingpin hut who is you know running his crime syndicate, and they're constantly. You know, the, the the rangers are, like, constantly arresting his people, trying to work their way further up the food chain and stuff like that. You know, I mean... Oh, there we go. I unlocked a little core memory for you right there. Yeah. There I, we go. Let, let's well, see it's some. Just, that's just an example, you know? I mean, even stuff like you and I, after we watched the, the, uh, the what was it, episode seven, where the little boy in the stables, is, you know, uses the force to pull the broom to oh, him. Oh, that was Last Jedi. I, I yeah. Yeah. It's little things like that. It's like, okay, tell me some more about this kid. Yeah. Does he go broom on to boy. become a force user? Yeah. Does yeah. Broom Boy go what happened on to, to become broom a force boy? user? What did happen to Broom Boy? Does he, does he get boy? captured by the, the Empire and they're cracked down against force users? Does he somehow make a, a miraculous escape with the help of some people like what happened in uh, The Mandalorian? No, nah, he got no, the crap beat out of him and had to... That? Not Mandalorian. Yeah, uh, he got he got the crap beat out of him and was made to keep sweeping the stable. Forget your force powers, kid. Okay. Yeah, well, he knocked those force powers right out of him. Well, <laughs> just <laughs> slap the force right out of him. <laughs> Man, okay, we are not advocating for child abuse. Please don't cancel our channel, YouTube. How do we know that was really a kid? He could have been like 50. Look at baby Yoda. He oh, could have. Rogu. But, but until such time as they explain that, he looks like a kid. He's a nine-year-old kid. I'm All sorry. right, fine. <laughs> but he was an evil guy that hit him. Oh, definitely. Yeah, exactly. What, what kind of a monster slaps a nine-year-old boy? That guy. That guy. He is definitely clearly that guy. evil, yes. Yeah. That is not to be argued. <laughs> People who slap <laughs> children are evil. All right. Yes. Just to be clear. Very evil. <laughs> we 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 shouldn't have to have this kind of a disclaimer. It's obvious. We don't beat our kids. I know, but that's the hilarity in it is that you make the disclaimer so like over the top uh, that people are like, okay, we we don't really need these constant disclaimers. I guess we're losing our sponsorship from Raid Shadow <laughs> Legends. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we hadn't had one of those in a while. No. We no. haven't ever had a sponsorship. <laughs> no, not so. a single one. We are self-sponsored, self-made. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, that was fun. So um, let's talk a little bit about what's on the table now. Uh, these are some fresh, fresh helmets from all those videos ago because we're on, like, episode 29 now or something. And when we were doing all the product announcements, we're going to have this helmet and that helmet. And we had the, the models up here and all that. Here they are. Fresh, d freshly done in primer today. After a little bit of cleanup, we have our castings of our generic uh, Mandalorian helmets um, or Death Watch helmet or Axe Wolves helmet or uh, it could even be a Jango Fett helmet. It could be any helmet you want or you fill in a few things and it could be another generic Mando helmet. Just so y'all can see. Ooh, very nice helmet. Okay, my nose is sticking out a little bit. I don't have any padding in here. Uh, but yeah, very happy with this. Very happy with the way this one turned out. This one's really special because it did an experimental mold on this one. Uh, it still runs in our Rotocaster, but we have no seams on this helmet whatsoever, so it makes cleanup so much better. And there's hardly anything to even clean up on these helmets. Uh, the next one is the Shore Trooper helmet, which this isn't complete. It's missing the little visor thingy uh, and all that. But we are much, much, much happier with this helmet. It is bigger. There is room. You can put it on and off without any major issues. And uh, another really, really clean casting this was standard it was split so you got to do the seam uh clean up the seam work and stuff on it <clears throat> well but the seam largely disappears because this helmet has that uh, it does shield in the front it still runs and across on the, back. the front of the nose you've got a piece that glues in place so 
the visible seam is very small compared to the old side seam style. Yeah, very happy with this helmet. We're calling it the version 3, but it's technically, like, I think version 5 at this point. Um, version yeah. 5.02.14. Something theta. like that. Yeah, it, it really is, because there, there were earlier helmets, and then... Uh, mold dies and some tweaks were made and then that helmet was cast again so little things like that but yeah this is the new standard and fulfilling and all that stuff that we announced forever ago now it's it's pretty much down to the helmet phase of just making helmet molds so we've we've done all the armor projects that we're going to do here for a little bit and really happy to be getting on these i have the uh, the girls are up next as i, I call them we have the live action um, well, live action of both live action Sabine and live action Bo Katans. Uh, I'm they're going to be done the same style as this one so that there were no seams or anything on it, make them real easy to clean up, really affordable helmets, too. No reason those helmets should be drastically expensive. Um, and yeah, that's that's what's on the table today. Literally, that Literally, is what is on the table. That is what they is are on, on the, the table. table right now. <laughs> no, only one is on the table. <laughs> Now they're both on the table. Okay. Now you're just okay. being weird. Well, what you, else you, took it too far. you took it too far. You took it too far. Like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> <laughs> you leave that door crack just one bit and you I come crashing through. through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. These uh, the lines on these are what get me. I mean, like, they have been cleaned up, so but clean. there there was no no cleanup really done besides basic finishing. Um, we didn't do any like hard block sanding or major filling. It was just hey, we're cutting out islands, we're sanding things down, we're washing them, uh, we're gluing on details, we're priming it. Just really easy to assembly line. And glad we have it. This is actually our, our first Mandalorian helmet. Glad it's that one. Um, that, that was one of the Mystery Makers files, and we got a bunch more things going with him, too. This uh, accent piece here in the rear, is this glued in afterwards? It is glued in afterwards, yeah. yeah. So okay. the, the ear caps are actually blank uh, so that you're not— Okay, I see. It's it just— a, Yeah. Yeah, this is glued on. This one's glued on. Uh, we're, so we're not stuck with just those ear caps in case somebody wants to do a custom helmet. Yeah. Another yeah. thing about those two, and a lot of people do mold those kind of details in. I don't for two reasons. One, well, actually, maybe several reasons. Don't listen to me. I can't count. Um, so resin and rubber don't like hard corners. Yeah. So if this were being rotocast, there would be a lot of really bad thin spots around there. Yep. Second is going to be mold life. So these are the kind of details that'll start to tear out over time and just ruin a helmet mold. So by keeping those off, it makes things a little bit more simple as far as production goes. And then, yeah, the third reason really is so you can customize your caps. Well, it's too easy. Just leave them off. There's, yeah, there's no leave them reason. Off. For me, you know? in this day and age, with, with this stuff, yes, leave them off. As they're just as easy to print out real quick or if we make a mold for it to cast and forget about it. There's some spots where you're... Yeah, but it's... I don't know if that's well, just where there was like a, a dust coating. Oh, it is just a dust coating okay. on this right now. Uh, for the Shore Trooper, the texture isn't that big of a deal. This will get polished a little bit with some thousand grit and get top coated. For the Shore Trooper, I actually like kind of keeping a texture on it. Yeah. Um, it'll hold weathering a little bit better, and it's it gets weathered. So you don't really worry about Yeah. You know, how it's supposed to be dirty. polished, clean it is is perfectly a little bit of stuff like that will really help the weathering stick on there and bring out other details too so maybe next time y'all see us these will be finished Ooh, fancy very fancy all right i think that about wraps us up for today and uh, one little thing well, before go ahead. we go a uh, little trivia tidbit of the day Ooh, brought, we got to trivia. You, brought to you courtesy of uh the ewok adventure caravan of courage um fish F E E S H, fish, and I confirmed this by subtitles. Fish is the Ewok word for fuck. <laughs> wow. So you know when you're wanting to say fish, yes, I'm out of here. You could just say fish this. I'm gone. Wow. Okay. 
<laughs> just tear up my. They had that subtitled. Yeah. <laughs> the what? whole the whole movie subtitled. Oh great! Now I have to go watch it. Yeah, you could learn a lot of Ewok words in there. <laughs> I wonder if they actually know about this, or if this is someone that just pulled a fast one on them. I, I, we watched it on Disney Plus, so 